Oh, wait, that's me. Hello, and welcome to episode 197 of First Geek 411. I'm your host this week. I'm still rusty, but I'm Chris Nicolay. <laughs> and joining us from a place far warmer, Emma. You know it. You know, it's always going to be warmer. <laughs> and probably still colder than me, Shanine. I don't know. It's not that cold right now, which is nice. Is it about freezing? No. Oh, okay. We are. We hit 50 today. It's nice. It's weird. It's okay. been calm. I mean, weird. It might have been above zero earlier today. It's not now. <laughs> but Montana is very temperamental. We're weird. We'll get. It is. We, we, we like those very big temperature swings around now. It's like, oh, you, you, you think spring's here. Just yes. kidding. We're going to yeah. cover the streets in ice. We're going to... We heard you like 60 degree temperature swings. Here you go. That's Fahrenheit, by the way. Not That'd be, that'd be crazy Celsius. Actually, I, I'm not sure yeah. that... No. I'm pretty sure you'd die. That, yeah, that would be too much. If it was Celsius. I don't know how Celsius works. I've never understood it. That's like our entire range of weather here. 30 to negative 30? Yeah. <laughs> like, I could not imagine negative 30 degrees Celsius. That'd be wet. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's not a good time. But, of course, everyone, welcome. Um, uh, we are uh, be sure to check us out on all of our socials. We are one geek four one one on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can always join our Discord server um, and join us in conversations after the fact, or even before we discuss them on here. Um, you can email us directly. Our email is one st geek four one one at gmail dot com. You can check out our notes and other information that hasn't been updated in a while because it's my fault on our website onegeek411.com you can watch us live if you are now or check us out later on youtube um, but we are live with our talk show every monday night at 6 45 mountain time or in this case 705 mountain time i think is when we started i don't know uh <laughs> be sure to drop a comment like us or subscribe to us wherever you listen or watch to us and check out our merch on our red bubble store but let's go ahead and jump in. What we've been up to this past week, starting with Janine. Me. Okay. Not a whole lot. I felt busy, but um, on Saturday night, my husband and I had a paint night at home, and it was very fun. Um. My husband painted a platypus and it turned out adorable. And I was attempting like a castle in a dark woods with a fox and I made it like a third of the way. So I still have to finish my painting, but it what was What did you finish, the castle or the fox? The fox and most time. of the woods. I got one tree. Trees are hard. <laughs> Trees are hard. Yeah. I'm pretty okay with how my castle is looking, though. I mean, mostly it's just a stone wall that you can see, but... Better than nothing. Yeah. I'm proud of it. Good. That's you the have to share thing. it when it's done? Yeah, I will. Because maybe I'll steal it and use it for... <sighs> it... Yanengard. Right? I don't... What did I name her? <laughs> <laughs> It's been a while, it's guys. Been a while. <laughs> I haven't looked. <laughs> and then last night we got to play D and D. We haven't been able to meet with our in-person group since the beginning of December, so it was very exciting to get back together with them. Um, this campaign, my husband is the DM, and I have. We started the campaign with another group that fell apart very quickly. So I have played the beginning of the campaign already. And 
So the person that we were fighting last night, the first time I encountered him, we we killed him. And unbeknownst to me, my husband changed his stats for last night and apparently wanted us to figure out some other way of dealing with him. That's a good DM no. right there. Yeah. No man. But I just attacked him. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, he went down easy pretty easy last time. I'm <laughs> just do the same thing this time. I didn't no. think he was like super easy last time, but he was definitely manageable. This time he would have one shot me if the if one of my party members hadn't done like a I'll take some of your damage. So that so was nice. terrifying. That's a good member. Good party. Because my HP is quite high. <laughs> It is, I believe, the Blue highest pool. out of our party. You're the tank. And he almost one shot me. Red flags right there. <laughs> it was, but I still killed him. And apparently, we weren't supposed to be able to. Good Swear. job. Jimmy. That's what all DMs say. Yeah. It's gonna make you feel good. I had a sword on fire. It couldn't have ended any other way. Oh, okay, Anna. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do tend to pull that move off. <laughs> you know? Every fight so far, not that there's been a It's a but... sword that's on fire. What else yeah. do I want to do? Right? Fire sword. Not a whole lot, you know? <laughs> Love a good searing smite. Yeah. I, I can't wait to get back into our podcast campaign just because I do have some... Like I, I, I want you guys to get to the point where you get my homebrew items. <laughs> I'm excited for that. They're pretty cool. I'm, I'm very proud of myself, my, my homebrew items. But we'll see. Anything else? So D and D, paint night, great things. Yeah, that's pretty much it for me. What more do you want, though? Like, can't ask for much more. Oh, true. I'm surprised Emma has multiple things on her list, but Emma, take it away. <laughs> I do have multiple things on my list because, yay, um, I played, once again, more Horizon Forbidden West. I spent all day Friday playing because I had the day off. Woohoo! That was a lot of fun. But just a day, uh, apparently. <laughs> just, just an entire day, pretty much, because um, I also had the weekend off from filming, which was nice. Um, so I could dedicate a day to just playing video games because I had extra time to do work. Um, and then I started uh, the book club books, plural, one for this month, one for next month. Really enjoying them both um, so far. And I also babysat last night. Cute little baby, like six months old. And that was a lot of fun. <laughs> I mean, he just slept the entire time, which very meant that I faces. just, you know, <laughs> very. But they're not very cute at that age yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> they are. This one is. Um, this That's what they all say. Very cute. <laughs> you haven't met him. Um, he just baby. slept the entire time, which meant that I was reading the entire time, and that was nice. So, I had a free weekend this weekend, which. Does it sound super exciting, but it is when you're in film school and like oh, no, you're it's, filming it's all weekend, exciting. every weekend. So it's just like, yes. Even I if have you have a free weekend every weekend, it's off. always exciting. Okay. It's more exciting when you're in film school because it's like you're not occupied with filming for eight to 12 hours a day. So well, that's been my week. Nice. I myself haven't been up too much. I did get a surprise visitor this weekend. My friend from Coeur d'Alene ended up in town to visit Ooh. his mom, who just got back from the Philippines, which is super cool. But he did not give me a heads up, so I was unprepared and had to move a lot of things around. Um, but So I, I rushed a lot of things. Um, like I, I had the whole weekend planned and like housework and things like that. Just been exciting but i only got like half of it done which is fine it's fine i got plenty of time um so i've been doing that uh but as a result of him visiting we did have a little game fun little game night um at a friend's house we just play basic games like catchphrase and desolations it's like a 
and we played like a 30 year old catchphrase um which was very entertaining it's like what what is this <laughs> or it's like when you do the sci tech uh category it's like <laughs> like yeah these are a little out of date <laughs> answering machine <laughs> which no one which we lost on that one no one could think of the word because it's like voicemail what, what else is there and we were all live during answering machines it's a good time good times um other than that i did play a little pokemon Arceus, but uh after which we'll get to later um after the update that launched um but yeah and then if anyone wants to know what Cameron's doing, just look at the pictures in our Discord. He's in Disney World still. Having lots of fun. Not smiling. We're not mad. <laughs> not mad at all. I I'm mean, not mad, just jealous. <laughs> I'm probably the least mad of the three of us because I live right next to Disneyland. So. Does that make I me mean, the you've most been to mad? how many theme parks in the last six months, Emma? Two. But I went to one of them twice. twice. Exactly. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Perks of living in LA, guys. Also, I, you know, like, I joke about it. I'm not the biggest fan of theme parks for the most part. But also, I can enjoy them. <laughs> Invite would have been nice. I enjoy them. So, <laughs> you know what? That's all I'm saying. I'll appreciate the location I live in while I'm here. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's why Cameron's not with us still, uh, but hopefully he'll be back soon. Um, but yeah, so fun stuff. Uh, if you're here, let us know what you've been up to or tell us in your discord. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into our discussion topic slash news. Um, since Janine is been so gracious to share these experiences on Twitter, why don't you... Tell us what you'd like to talk about. All right. Had a very interesting week of dreams. Um, it's been great dreams. <laughs> I've been entertained. Um, yeah. So one night I dreamt that Stephanie Beatriz was in my D&D &D group and in like the middle of my dream, I had like an existential crisis about the voice of Mirabelle being in my D&D &D group. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. So and there's that to have an D &D Who is Stephanie group. Beatrice? Um, she is the voice of Mirabelle from Encanto or Rosa Diaz from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yes. It's like, that's there what is. I was looking for. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> Which is weird because I definitely knew her as Rosa first, but in my dream she was the voice of Mirabelle. So that That's just goes to show you how much Encanto I have been listening to at work lately. It's just um. also throughout like that's crazy good range. Going from <laughs> Brooklyn Nine Nine it's, to kind yeah. of a Yeah. Again, Disney. heard her as Rosa yeah. first and then hearing her talk as herself is Wait, weird <laughs> right <laughs> like i've like seen some interviews with her i'm like you're like so strange what uh it's like not even close and yet you did that for how many seasons of brooklyn Nine Nine, like episode after episode it's like that's impressive yeah. that's good like no that's wonder she's team. doing voice acting <laughs> um yeah, and then the following night, I had a dream that Matt Mercer owned my local game store, and he was all out of the Taldori campaign setting book, but he did have a wand that he could sell me um, for my D&D campaign at home, but I had to convince him to sell it to me, but the better reasons that I gave the stronger it would become. So. That sounds like the most Matt Mercer shop ever. Yeah. Regardless. Absolutely. It's like, that's literally <laughs> like his camp, his players go into and find a shop. And yep. As, as Shanine told me in a conversation, that's some real life Gilmore oh, stuff. That's what I did this last <laughs> weekend is I got caught up on Vox Machina. 
Sorry, that is something I did manage to do. But Yes, and all of this was super strange because I have had probably two other celebrity dreams in my whole life. So it's very weird to have two in a row this week. And I don't usually dream about like things that I enjoy doing. You're growing as a person. I'm I'm glad. Growing as a nerd. (laughs) (laughs) You love to see it. Must be it. You love to see it. If it makes you feel better, my entire Twitter account right now is just D and D stuff. (laughs) So it's basically my life. But my question is have you had celebrity and or geeky dreams and what are they i have i don't remember dreams the details as aspirations or no i'm just kidding. but <laughs> i know i've had a couple of doctor who related dreams in my life to no one's surprise like and specifically the david Tennant 10th doctor um like coming down and taking me away to do whatever you know going on adventures and doing companion stuff. Um, But I haven't had any dreams, at least that I remember recently, so. Yeah, like all the time. I'm a very vivid dreamer at times. And I always wake, like it's annoying because you wake up disappointed. I'm just like, oh. Yeah. It's like, that could have actually been very real, but no. Um trying to think of a good one now though like I, i've had a death note dream which is is a little dark are you on the but... good side of that dream or the bad side of that dream i mean chris in the dream thought he was on the good side of that dream <laughs> but i definitely killed a lot of people but i thought there there were bad people okay my mind isn't that entire show to question the morality of having the power to kill people yes that is the entire point not just necessarily having the power but like the idea that having the power and exerting it in what you believe is right that's the morality question is like yeah how do you know (laughs) like uh there is an anime out right now like how a realist uh rebuilt the kingdom it's an isekai um and this kind of very well versed but kind of wasn't doing anything in his life in our world but he gets summoned to another world the king abdicates power to him and he like initial like initializes like a lot of like modern like economic policies and stuff but there's also a point in that where he has to like he he it's a feudal kind of era or medieval era so he has like he kills people to kind of have people fear him to kind of maintain order um based on certain things and also but he also as a result he he i mean he's He's just a commoner that gets thrown into a very high position of power. No one questions it kind of situation. And he asks someone, like, literally, if I become drunk with power, like, I don't trust these people to take me out. So I think they'll just go with it. So he, like, tells someone, literally, kill me. And it's kind of cool. But, like, it deals with that like that theme a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I like to think I'd do good things with Death Note, kind of, maybe. I make a lot of money. That's all I'm saying. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's how you get caught. Um, I don't know. I've had like Marvel dreams. That's probably like, yeah. Met Robert Downey Jr. Turns out, well, like, so he wasn't Tony Stark. He was just Robert Downey Jr., but he was Iron Man. So if, if the MCU were real, kinda, and instead of Tony Stark, it would just be RDJ as it's Iron more Man. So RDJ made so much money off of being Iron Man that he made the suit and became Iron Man. Uh. 
and I met him, and he gave me a suit. That's kind of that one wasn't so plausible. I did not wake up disappointed. More so that it's like I should have slept longer. Um. <laughs> right while you're there. Yeah. It's like. So yeah, once you wake up, you can never return. Sometimes. There's been a few instances where I'm like, oh, should have. And I went back to bed and resumed the dream. Have you guys ever done that? Dreams are weird. Have you guys ever been able to resume a dream? No. No. I'm weird. Yes, you are. How vivid are your dreams? I think the thing more for me is whether or not I remember them. A lot of remembering dreams is based on when in your sleep cycle you wake up. Yeah. So I think I once like... had a dream when I was a, in high school that an active volcano showed up in Washington as my family was sitting down to eat dinner. And no one believed me that there was an active volcano, so I was the only one that got out from it. That's like one of the few I remember to this day. <laughs> one of my most vivid dreams was a nightmare. Um, it must have been like eight. Um, and they were staying at my grandma's house, and we weren't allowed to go upstairs um, to the attic because there's just mostly it's because there's trash and stuff up there. We were young, and they didn't want us getting into it. Um, I didn't listen. Of course, I went upstairs. But that's not like the dream. I sneak upstairs, and there's a light. There's a room, and there's a light on the door. And I'm like, hmm, what's going on up here? And I hear something. So I go knock on the door, and I hear scrambling, and I run away. Um, and I'm like, hmm, I got to find out. So I go back up, and I knock on it again, and the door immediately opens, and it's a giant ant. And it chases me down and eats me. What giant a way to go, ant. man. I don't even ant. have a fear for an ant. I don't know like where that came from. I don't, I don't know. Like maybe I stayed up and watched something. I don't know where that came from. It's like I figured it would be a doll or something because I hate dolls, and that stems from my grandma making dolls and also st staying up at her house one time while they were watching Chucky. Oh. They didn't know I was yeah, sitting in the back of the it. room. Um, and yeah. So, but no, in this case, there was a giant ant living upstairs in the attic. Right? Exactly. That's, that's, huh. that's the right face you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever, oh, what's the term? What's the term for where you can control your dreams and you know you're dreaming? Um, lucid dreaming. Lucid dreaming. Yeah. No. No. I think the closest I've gotten was once I was having a really bad nightmare, but then like somehow consciously was like, this is a dream. And I forced myself awake. That's the closest I've gotten. I mean, that's pretty, that's, a, that's, that's there. It's like realizing it's a dream and willing yourself awake. Yeah. I'll count that. Not a couple of times. No, like, Inception-like dreams? I mean, was in a dream. I woke up, I was still in a dream. Then I woke up again, and I was still in a dream. <laughs> but be sure to keep sharing those as they come up. Yeah. And make sure knows. you tag everyone. Keep that. Just, just keep yeah. doing it until just someone keep it going. responds. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, how about like... we make that wish a real, that dream a reality? <laughs> it's like I wasn't trying to like, like it wasn't aspirational, but I'll take it. <laughs> All right, Emma. Hey, it is I. With um news that it is Horizon Zero Dawn's fifth birthday. Happy birthday to my favorite game ever. Um. Just gonna put that out there. Still above the Forbidden so, West, then, or yes, or are you just putting them together? It's like doesn't matter. Well, well, it's like the real, like the original. Horizon Zero Dawn was released five years ago, too. right? And it turned five. Yes, 
and you're placing that still above Forbidden West. Well, I haven't finished Forbidden West yet, so I haven't drawn any <laughs> conclusions of it yet. Okay. But essentially, yes. As of right now, they are clumped together. Okay. <laughs> because I haven't been disappointed yet. Just have it confirmed. Yes. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, this just also... makes me feel old, though. <laughs> yeah, same. This is five um, years old? What? So, last night, two nights ago, were the SAG Awards, the Screen Actors Guild Awards, and two actors from Squid Games won um, awards from that, which is super cool because um, we love it when people from other countries get recognized for their work in an industry that's just not super diverse. Um, it was the main actor, Lee, and then I don't know how to pronounce her name, Young. Um, both won in their categories for, where is it? Um, best Male Actor in a Drama Series, and then I think it's Supporting Actress in a Drama Series. Um, so that's super cool for that. Um, cult classic. Instant cult classic. Squid Games. Yes. <laughs> and no one wants to take the... Set out. <laughs> The moral like of work that... the story, they, they want to live it. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, I think I could win all those games. Could you, though? <laughs> no. So. One of those games was just that. luck. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Mm -mm. Yeah, I wouldn't have returned after I got out. No, neither would I. <laughs> Congrats to those people for yeah, getting their awesome. awards. Great job. That was a show that was went through a lot to try and get made, and it deserves the recognition. So, I just like the emergence of of Korean dramas in American culture or West culture, I guess, like. That, that just bring in more. I just, I love what they're doing with that stuff. I agree. No one saw it coming. <laughs> Netflix, maybe, but. Yeah, here we are. Enjoying the content. Yeah. It's before I used to have to watch Korean dramas elsewhere. <laughs> now I just got to watch it on my normal streaming platforms. Not that I watch a lot of Korean dramas. Don't look at me. Um, my news piece for this week is... Um, so, a while ago, we talked about PlayStation announced a Twisted Metal TV series. Um, we did get more details. So, Are you guys familiar with Twisted Metal? It's an old PlayStation uh, IP. I'm not. Maybe it's not even PlayStation's, but it was on PlayStation um, game. Well, but it, it was is like the like the predecessor to GTA in a in a way like it's kind of just like a but it's just like a derby type game like you're in these crazy vehicles and you're just it is a that you were driving around trying to kill your opponents and you're all in these weird vehicles um uh, interesting like, like a cart i don't even know what you'd call this um, i mean it looks kind of like a cross between gta and um the the mario kart games yeah just from my yeah, basic it's, it's, assumption <laughs> the only point at. is destruction you just go around you know you have these equipped vehicles and they're they like each vehicle has like a unique character but it's like a, a battle arena and you just Go around trying to destroy each other. I really enjoyed it when it was out. But 
it's like the last series I would have thought would get a TV series. Um, but we got a little more information. It is officially going to be a comedy um, and will make its debut on Peacock. That's some spooky clowns in these pictures I looked up. Yeah, that's kind of the primary character, like main aesthetic, I, kind of flaming hair type With thing. their heads on fire. <laughs> yes. Um, it, it's just a very, very bizarre game that I just never would have thought would <laughs> Who thinks? It's like, oh, we want to make a a, a video game TV series. That's all what the rage game? these Twisted days. Metal. Is, is um it's like, okay. Taking video games and adapting them to the screen. Right. Um, but in kind of more relatable note uh news, uh we did get a Pokemon Presents um this weekend, yesterday. Twenty seventh? Yes, yesterday it was twenty. Sounds right. Yeah. Yesterday morning. Um, in which we got some cool reveals. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Legends Arceus got an update, uh, like post-game update. Um, so there's a little more content to play through now, um, which is really cool. Um, that is just sudden and also really fast comparatively. Like, Arceus has not been out that long. Uh, like, one thing, six weeks? Crazy. Okay, um, yeah. Which is really cool. Uh, they like you get more um, invasion encounters, so like, in different areas, so you can do some more shiny hunting if you want. Um, it's really cool. I'm been kind of enjoying it. Just a little extra aspect for that post game since everyone's already beat it. <laughs> it was also a really short story. Um, they also announced that they are making a anime based on the Hisuian region, um, which I'm looking forward to. Just a different uh, Pokemon show um, instead of Ash. Or they're sending Ash back in time. I don't know. I hope they don't do that. Hope not. Bring some new characters into the franchise. Right. We've been following Ash for too long. Don't get me wrong. I loved it when I was young. <laughs> and people love him now, sure. But I don't know. You, 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 it's such a big world. There's so many good things you could do with it. Um, but also, I mean, we also got they, they announced uh, the officially Alola region Pokemon are coming to Pokemon Go. Um, or more Alola region, we should say. Or the rest of the Alola region. So we've, we've always had Alola executor draft tree thing um but they uh, officially the rest of the alola region will be coming there um until that launches later like i think later this week um uh the alola executor will be more prominent um in the game and and we got the next uh pairing of uh, install Pokemon installment, which is Scarlet and Violet. I would say, well, normally, I mean, I s am still excited for the Fire Pokemon starter. For once, I'm excited for the Plant Pokemon starter. You weren't excited for Rowlet? No, <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> How dare you, Emma? <laughs> Admittedly. How dare you? I was so excited for Rowlet. Rowlet was a adorable and i couldn't wait for to have him and also his final evolution was ghost or grass ghost and i was like yes i have to have it even even so much that in legends rcs i had to pick rowlet although i kind of regretted it because not very excited for the owl grass fighting <sighs> he's so cute though yes and he but was so I good in the show i'm more excited for the plant this time i am super excited for the for the for the grass type in this one um but we did just get a brief picture of uh the three starters and we do get grass grass puppers and i am super excited because honestly i can't Pumpers. with the exception of like leafy on um i can't think of a grass doggo 
type canine-esque animal and so here for it this is it's also really cute this is totally adorbs um the fire is kind of the derpy one um and most people are talking about the fire starter um people are like oh he's it's an apple we already have apple pokemon and things like that but like there's there's talk um he was a hippo he's something but like like his shape his general shape people are saying he looks like an apple i'm like that thing's a pepper oh yeah i've seen that comparison that thing is i think it's a pepper um and they're also talking about how like like kind of has like color schematically it kind of has that um cubone aesthetic um and they're talking about like the top half of his head is actually a skull i see that and theories are that possibly this is going to be a ghost fire starter because it's a ghost pepper that's scary I get on board with it honestly I'm more on board with that than the apple theory. Not gonna yeah, lie. Yeah, me too. Like, first of all, also fire ghost is just amazing. We don't have a ton yeah. of fire ghost. We did just get a fire ghost as a starter in Legends Arceus, which is cool. Um, and then we had Lantern and Litwick and that evolution line. And then we had Alola Marowak. Was ghost fire. Um, and then uh, a lot of people also really love the duck, the fire, the water starter. Which I get. Yeah. But also not my aesthetic, so. No. <laughs> but I forget. <sighs> Previously, they talked about how every time they put together starters, they, they have like they have one cute one that's supposed to be cool and I forget what the third one that's just fun um, or looks fun, jolly. I, don't, I can't remember the exact adjectives they use, but you can definitely see that in this one. Like they're, they're all of mm -hmm. the, the three aesthetics are very distinct, very different. Um, fire waters are a little closer to each other. Grass is definitely distinct just in terms of like eyes. It has like the full eye development. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to see more. This is supposed to come out later this year. Which is crazy. So much Pokemon. Sorry, I think your mic cut out there, Emma. All of it. So much. All of it. Gotta catch them all. But they keep making more to catch. But yeah, so that'll make... Uh, well, I guess technically it's the end of last year that we got remakes of diamond and pearl but we got legends arceus which is a full game style and then now we're getting the actual next piece how do you guys feel about it shanine i mean i'm excited for people who are excited <laughs> i still haven't finished pokemon sword so i probably won't be getting any pokemon games anytime soon okay but fair. fair that's not how pokemon games work but okay okay <laughs> like, i didn't finish the last one but this one looks exciting so i'm picking this up and just do the last <laughs> one that's what you do you just transfer all your pokemon over to i mean if i do it. get it i'll definitely be going for the pupper starter for sure that is the right answer. Well, we know Cameron's going water based on tweets, but he can be wrong. It's okay. <laughs> the duck is fine. The duck. I can't wait to see their evolutions, actually. Like, I. Yeah. True. I have the way, but, yeah, like, I, I always go with my initial thing. So, grass puppers is, is, is it in this case. But. Also, I, I really want to see that fire evolution. <laughs> Ew. It just yeah. looks fun. <laughs> and I hope they don't screw up the water evolution this time. Looking at you, Sobble. Okay, so I, that's a lie. So um, 
I did not go with my gut or my initial in that lineup. I did not pick Sobble when I wanted to when he was first announced because I saw his evolution. I was like, that's dumb. <laughs> so I have to take that like back. Your gut there, huh? My gut was Sobble's cute and durable and kind of vulnerable, and I wanted to take care of it. And then it turned into this weird emo snake thing that I didn't want anything to do with. It's like, with how much love I'm going to give you and that's what you're going to turn into, that doesn't make sense. If I neglected you, that might make sense. <laughs> Sobble needs an alternate evolution based on friendship level. <laughs> you looking it up, Shanine? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sobble turns oh, into an emo okay, kid. Yeah. True. Yeah, a little bit. See, yeah, it's a little just like, um, what happened? Your face was so wide and now it's so weird and awkward. I think yeah, he, he looks, looks like he, you would find him sketchily leaning against the wall in a back alley or something. Exactly. I don't want that. I don't want to be associated with that. Don't. <laughs> That's Sword and Shield. Yeah. So, Sword and Shield stars. I can't remember what all they were. That was. That is the Grookey. I think so. And I went with Grookey because. I feel like I went with Grookey. Yeah. Cinderace was cool, too. Um, or Score Buddy. I liked him, but, you know. I, I think I'm just a grass guy. I don't know. I just wanted that big chimp, the drummer. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Because I saw him, and I saw all like the other random Pokemon, and I was like, I want a band. <laughs> I want a Pokemon band. Because they had the uh, Obstagoon. It was like the rocker, purple, and there was, yeah. I was like, yep, I know what I'm doing. That's what yep. I did. <laughs> but that, oh, the uh, last other thing is we did get uh, the design for the new uh, PlayStation VR set. Um, and it looks just as you would expect. It looks like a PlayStation VR set. It's white and matches the PlayStation aesthetic perfectly. Um, hopefully we get a little more information and hopefully it's a single cable this time, but... Who knows? Uh, but that brings us to our top three um, this week, which I forgot to mention at the top of the show. But we are talking about our top three favorite icebreaker facts slash facts that I just like randomly throw up in the middle of conversations when I don't know what I'm doing. But for this, uh, Emma, why don't you start us off with this one? In that case, my first one as we all know, is the thing that is a me thing is that I don't like The Office as a show. And that I usually throw that out there if I feel like starting a debate. <laughs> if I'm ever there, I'll kind of agree. I'll take the middle ground. I'll just moderate. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's like, oh, we got the two ends here and I'm in the middle. Like, I've watched it. I've kind of enjoyed it. It's not my thing. So yeah. you convince me and you convince me. No. Already I'm said go. Currently watching it again as we speak. <laughs> like so many people just rewatch it. It's like there's so like I always get sad when I hear someone's rewatching The Office. It's my comfort show. I mean I get that, <laughs> no. but I'm just like Yeah. How many yes. anime recommendations have I just given you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> A lot. It's like, <laughs> and I have watched at least one of them, probably. You're getting there. <laughs> you just overexcited me at one point because we like got through a lot. It's like yes. And now we're rewatching The Office. I see how it is. I see how it is. That's not the only show I'm watching right now. That's true. You are someone that is consistently watching multiple, which is not what I'm used to. I guess. And so that's why I'm, I seem a little critical. I'm just not used to like 
people I know, when they say they're watching something, that's all they're watching. No, that's yeah. silly. Yeah, so when someone says they're rewatching The Office, like, to me, that's, yeah, I'm just, that's all I'm doing right now. Okay. Okay. Heartbreak. See how okay. it is. <laughs> but, Shanine, what is your favorite icebreaker fact or random thing that you throw out in conversation? this is a tough one for me i usually let other people do the ice breaking in conversations i mean yeah sometimes <laughs> i'm the type of person that sometimes i'm like i don't know where this is going so like i just want to throw this out did you guys know that <laughs> like complete maybe completely unrelated to anything else that's going on that's just my brain but <laughs> i don't know i am likely to bring up travel because i've been to several places and it's always fun to talk about where I've been and where I've enjoyed and other places that people have been and things that they recommend. So do you ever have like just a random trivia fact that you can use to bring in the fact that so you can talk more about that place you've traveled to? No. No. It's just like. It's like in like relevant <laughs> so... events. Like, you guys know Chernobyl's in Ukraine? I <laughs> <laughs> like for people that don't know geography it's like yeah at the time that chernobyl existed and we know about it it was the ussr <laughs> but speaking of ukraine have you guys been no <laughs> like that kind of fact but you just throw it like do you have like a favorite story you like to tell about your travels i mean it depends on the context if i'm bringing up like family visits or like DTS or like I don't know I don't necessarily have one go-to trying to think okay we didn't we don't know like we haven't been talking about travel but you want to talk about travel all right the one what, of the first things that comes to mind for me right now is going to the hot springs in the mountains of Ecuador boom which is pretty cool is there interesting and fact I about those hot um i mean they are warm but also <laughs> there was one that was 10 degrees celsius and it's pretty cold all right where i would respond with i once got stuck in a the door of a subway train in spain <laughs> One I've mentioned, so, so my first one is one I've mentioned here is like the the slowest bird of prey are owls. Granted, the fastest owl is the great horned owl. Catch about 40 miles They're also hour. the most silent. That's, that's, it's my fact, Emma. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're slow because their feathers have evolved so that they can fly silently. You left it open. I was, I was still going. Your facts have to have tangents because it's fun. But yeah, and they they can slow they can fly as slow as like two miles per hour. Isn't that crazy? They're not small. You know why? Because their wingspan to body ratio. Oh, sorry, missed the first half of that thought process. Do you know why they're the most silent? It has to do with the structure of their wings. Their wings structure of wings way. and their feathers. Uh, yeah, their wings and their feathers. Right. Yeah, we don't go into that much detail all the time, but yes. But that's I why do. I, like it. I don't know about you, but I oh, do. I do. Like, if no one, like, follows up or anything, then I'll keep going. Like, that's, that's my opportunity. <laughs> Just like... <laughs> that's great. We just talk about birds of prey for, like, 20 minutes. No, <laughs> I would totally right. be down for I that conversation. That, like, I love it, like just the randomness of it, but it's like I'm really hoping that someone actually knows more than me when I do that because I don't actually know a ton. I know these random little tidbits, and I like throwing them out there because I want someone to take over and just start educating me on birds of prey. 
or anything. Oh, yeah. Actually, anything. I like pretty much. I bring things up because I'm like, someone else, take over and educate me more. Yeah, it's Please. Anything. <laughs> it's like I'm semi interested, but not interested enough to actually go read a ton. <laughs> not gonna read a book. Sorry. Okay, I probably will, but. There's too many, and you would. I'm not going to make a decision, so I need someone to tell me what book to read. <laughs> Shanine, what book, what book should I read? Like, I have a lot of suggestions. <laughs> About Birds of Prey books? As long as your anime Birds recommendations. Of prey? I don't know. I could find one. I believe. But that's my first one. Emma, what's your second? My second is that when I was in middle school, I wanted to be an orca trainer. For SeaWorld. And then that dream very quickly got flipped upside down <laughs> for ethical reasons. But that was my. Adults ruin goal. everything, don't they? <laughs> yeah. It's like, how did you take something that I thought was so pure and wonderful and it turns out it's atrocious? Yeah. <laughs> I then wanted, after that, wanted to be a marine biologist so that I could protect the orcas. So, you know. That's a thing it's I a like. Transition. To, it was a very good transition, and that tends to spark a good conversation. So, <laughs> nice. And now she seeks to become a documentarian <laughs> about marine life. <laughs> All of it. Next great octopus is. I don't know. I can't remember. My octopus teacher. My octopus teacher. That one. Director, really right here. It. You saw it here first. <laughs> um, Just right. give me a few years. What else you got for us, Janine? Okay. I thought of one. Um, Zaboomafu has been coming up like a weird amount lately. And the one thing that I remember learning from Zaboomafu like 20 years ago is that capybaras are the world's largest rodent. And they're also heckin' adorable. Yeah they, are. yeah, they need to reclassify that animal because it's too cute to be a rodent. They 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 do need to differentiate the cute rodents from the ugly, like the actual ones that we don't want around. No, I'm just joking. Yeah. They're all important technically, I get it. <laughs> Ecosystems, yada yada. But just have to say i don't know how my brain made this connection but i just relearned the other day that arthur is an aardvark a-a-r-t-v-a-r-k like aardvark. it's not related to shanine's kind of zaboomafu <laughs> apart from the fact that apparently my brain made that connection but things i just relearned that so that we need to know about our childhood shows that's what we're learning yeah. <laughs> that is a good one then you could go so many routes with that conversation could take so many turns either we go into a full-on conversation about zabumafu or we go into a full-on conversation about rodents or a full-on conversation just specifically about capybaras yeah i mean i also looked up the crab brothers the other day and they're still like 20 years old in my mind and i tell yeah, you what oh, they I are know. not 20 anymore <laughs> No. Like full on dad bods and just like not even like outdoorsy anymore. Gray hair and <laughs> it you is know. shocking. Wrinkles. <laughs> if you do not want to ruin your childhood, I'm pretty sure don't. the Crap Brothers were my first ever celebrity crush as a kid. Just like, oh man. When I didn't even know what that was yet. <laughs> now I have to I have to know. Oh no. no. And it brought it up. Yeah, it's not bad. The image I had in my mind, though. I, I get that. I was kind of hoping they just completely let themselves go. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's the image that was put into my head. So this is better than the image I was creating. Fair enough. So no, I'm happy just, I looked it up in this case. They've just aged as normal people would age. Yeah. But in my mind, they hadn't aged. Yeah. And so it was a surprise. I get that. I like that. 
Um, my anime fun fact is that the uh, so well, I guess this is more manga fun fact. Um, so uh, the creator of Kiriko no Basket, um, Tarotoshi um, Fujimaki, uh, helped the creator of Haikyuu um work on the uh art of dr like sweat and volleyball action poses for like a month in exchange for being treated to ramen for a month i love that <laughs> just like sounds about right two very amazing uh <laughs> at least in terms of anime two great sports animes especially haiku and also the creator of haiku uh Haruichi Furudate. He created Haiku because he wanted to make volleyball more appealing and bring make it like a little more popular. And he very much succeeded, in my opinion. Like I wanted to play volleyball. I didn't, but I wanted to. Because Haiku. But yeah. That's that's those are my fun facts if we're on the anime tag. And if we if we bring that up, I'll always bring it up. If we're talking about sports animes. <laughs> Cause it's awesome. Cause that also means that the authors are just good people. They're like, yeah, let's let's help each other. Love that. In exchange for ramen. I love it. That's like that that's love a that. that's a person that's after my own heart right there. That's yeah. also why it includes food. <laughs> I'll help like, you if you give me food. Pretty much. I'll do most anything for anyone. For if there's free food. food involved. Yeah. Like, I'll probably say no if people just like, oh, I'll buy pizza. I'm like, eh, man, whatever. I can have pizza. Pizza's basic. Now it's like, I'll cook it. I'll cook something. It's like, I don't care if you're a good cook. I'm going to try that. And I'm going to come help you. Because food. Okay, Emma, number three. Number three, random animal fact. And that is that I one that I like to bring up is that um, lions are the only species of feline that live in societal groups. Every other species of feline are independent survivors. So lions are the only ones that live in groups or herds or packs or whatever you want to call it. Also, large cats can't purr. So, what? No. Yeah. That's disappointing to me. It is very disappointing. They can't purr. Like, at all? At all. Not even in captivity? Mm -mm. It's like it has that. to do with their, like, biological vocal cord structure. Or whatever. So. That's I figured nice. I might as well throw an actual animal fact in there. Makes cuddling with them a lot less appealing. Yes, it does. It's probably for the best, but... Like, I'm not sure if it's enough of a deterrent to keep me from cuddling one, but just less appealing. I mean, but given the opportunity, wolf dogs, will. so you know, all right, Janine, number three. Okay, so I thought of an interesting fun fact that I learned from the Office Ladies podcast. Um, in an episode of The Office, Michael brings up Prima Nocta, thinking that it was a real thing, but also thinking that it was something different from what it is. But it's a thing from Braveheart. Yep. Um, or <laughs> exists well, Braveheart. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of Braveheart. <laughs> yeah. So what I learned from The Office Ladies podcast is that there's no like historical proof of it actually existing but later on I believe it was the French had like made it up and put it into history to paint that time in a bad light and yeah then modern historians it kind of got out of control a little bit but then they realized there's actually no proof of it existing. So fun 
history stuff and historic people playing around with history. And Mel Gibson just <laughs> ate it up. <laughs> like just saying like so much of that show wouldn't that movie makes no sense without that concept granted it's a very embellished version of his story anyway but and I, for my third i'm just just so cameron's here with us i'm giving one that i'm sure he might throw out there was the fact that um and the original designs for Kingdom Hearts, Sora's main weapon was a saw. Not a key. And they had to tone it down because Disney. <laughs> I would have totally gone for the saw, man. Right? They should have at least like thrown in like a saw key. Pretty sure it was a song. Now I have to double check, but I, I, was, I was like, I have to throw this in there. And maybe I'm wrong. I remember seeing it somewhere. Thought we talked about it over here. Cameron's not even in chat to correct me. Punk. <laughs> Oh, well, we're going to yeah. treat it like that's right, but I'll confirm and correct myself next week if need to be. Do we have a top three for next week? I came up with this Not week. Yet. I was very proud of myself with this one, mostly. This was a good one. I thought it was fun. Good job, Chris. It's mostly because we started training someone today, so I got to throw out a lot of random things again. <laughs> so it's like, oh, <laughs> what are the three things I always do? <laughs> My honorable mention is that I slept for the first three weeks of my life and only woke up to eat. You what? When I was born, I like, I was born and then I fell asleep and just slept for the first three weeks of my life. And I only woke up to eat and then I'd go back to sleep. And my mom was so concerned that something was wrong with me that at like the three week mark, I woke up and I was a normal happy baby. I just needed to sleep for the first three weeks of my life. <laughs> so I mean, I feel mention. like that's like, don't complain. <laughs> it's like as a parent, it wasn't. You, it'd be like, <laughs> oh, I'm not even getting check that checked out. This is amazing. <laughs> Granted, my mom's a family practice doctor, so like. <laughs> oh, she could have inspected you yourself. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Touche. Well, that is our episode this week. Thank you for joining us for episode 197 and all our great news. Um, again, check us out on our socials. We are One Geek 411 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can join our Discord server. Join us for more conversations like this. Um, we are always live on Twitch. Six or we aim to be live on Twitch Mondays at six forty five Mountain Time, and you can if you miss it, you can check us out on our YouTube page. Check out our website. We are one geek four one one dot com, and you can follow us on our independent social, our individual socials. I'm not so foreign. I am. I am not prepared with an I in the prepared. I'm the Hoot and Howl on Twitter and Hoot and Howl Tales, T A L E S, on Instagram. Eat some fish. Read a book. <laughs> <laughs>